I'm Trish and welcome to Lesson 2 of the Quick Start Guide to Sewing. In Lesson 1 we covered our machine basics and setting our sewing machine ready to sew and today we're going to cover straight stitching. So when you're ready, let's get started. There are three main types of fabrics. We have wovens, knits and then felts. So today's lesson is concentrating on wovens. On woven fabrics we use a straight stitch, on knits we use a zigzag, but we'll deal with that in the next lesson. So woven fabrics tend not to stretch, I mean there's exceptions to the rule but we won't go into that now, and let's just look at setting our machine up to sew woven fabrics together. When you're ready, turn your machine on and make sure you have the plain presser foot set in your machine. Now this machine is computerised, it's electronic. You may have a machine with dials over here. Either way, it's going to be exactly the same process. Look for your straight stitch length. So I have three options here. They are literally just a dash on top of each other. The three options I have show needle left, needle centre, and um, it's to do with the back tacking, but don't worry about that right now. I'm going to choose 01 for my stitching. So if you go and choose and all you need to do is rotate your dial around to the straight stitching. The next thing we do is we need to check our stitch width and our stitch length. Generally for a straight stitch you want your dial set on two and a half length. That's two and a half millimeters. My machine shows it automatically by default. You might have a dial over here, just dial it round to two and a half. That is standard. We also have stitch width. Stitch width means zero. We're sewing a straight stitch, so we don't want our needle to go side to side. If we were sewing a jersey knit fabric, we would want it to go side to side, but we're sewing a straight stitch, so we want it to go forwards. The next thing we need to know about is if you were going to do gathering, you increase the stitch length and I tend to increase mine to four if I was doing gathering with this machine. Um, you can reduce your stitch length to lower than two. The stitches are closer together, so if you went down to a one and a half, and some people use that for reinforcing, but I have just about never used that for reinforcing. So my stitch always stays on two and a half for length. Now the other thing we need to think about is our tension. Don't fiddle with your tension guide unless you really need to, and we'll deal with that a little bit further down the track. So what we're going to do now is just get two pieces of fabric, cut exactly the same size, and we're going to sew a sample. Here I have two pieces of fabric. It's woven fabric. We're sewing with a straight stitch. And this is a really good example of a rope woven fabric because you can see the fibres. If we pull them out, you can see, apart from the fact it shreds really easily because this is a linen, but what we can see is the fibres are woven, warp and weft. So we have unders and overs. And because this is a woven fabric, woven fabrics will fray. Knits tend not to fray. So what we're going to do anyway is we're going to start off by sewing fabric together. So to sew fabric together, what we do is we place it right sides together. Like so. The reason we sew right sides together is because when we're finished, we want all the stitching to be on the inside. So this will be our good side on the inside. So place your fabric right sides together. Now often with your sewing pattern, you will have what's called notches. In commercial sewing patterns, they are triangles. You cut out from the seam. And in my sewing patterns, I encourage you just to create a small nick in about three mil, uh, that's one eighth of an inch perpendicular to the edge. So the idea of notches is that they are matching points. So when you cut out your two pieces of fabric, you place them so the notches are on top of each other and you mark them 
Now you might have just noticed I've placed a pin here. Now I have two notches. The idea of notches is that when we're sewing together, your garment will end up the way the designer wanted the garment to be. When we're sewing, try to pin within the seam allowance. That's because you can create, if your pins aren't sharp enough, you can create tiny nicks, especially in a more impressive fabric like silk. You can ruin your fabric by pinning and creating snags. Just like if you had a blunt needle, you could create the same thing. So let's just talk about pinning for a minute. There are two main methods of pinning and it all depends on what you personally prefer. Now I prefer pinning perpendicular to the seam line and I pin within the seam allowance. I always use a pin with a big head on it so it's easy to see and we never run over pins. Some people like to pin this way. which is also fine, but this depends on what's called your seam run. So let's talk about the seam run. When you sew a garment, you should always sew every seam, either from the hem to the waist, or the neck if it's a top, or from the neck to the hem. All the seams need to run in the same direction, it's to do with tension. I'm not going to go into it great detail now, but make sure if you pin, that you're going to pin the easiest way to remove the pins. I've pinned like this because as I sew, it's easy to pull the pins out. If the pin was facing this way, it would be much more difficult to pull the pins out. Now you may have noticed I put my fabric with the bulk of the fabric to the left. There's a limited amount of area in here to place the fabric, but you should always get in the habit of placing the bulk of your fabric to your left. If you need to, you can always flip your fabric over to make sure the bulk of your fabric's on the left. So let's get started with sewing. You might notice here on your plate you have numbers. Sometimes these are in metric, sometimes these are imperial. These refer to your seam allowances and each pattern is different but generally a commercial sewing pattern will have a one and a half centimetre seam and my sewing patterns I allow for a one centimetre seam which is three eighths of an inch for woven fabrics. So what you do is you line up these raw edges which should be sitting exactly on top of each other with the seam allowance you want in which case I line mine up with the number one which is 3 eighths of an inch and then what we want to do is place the fabric so that the needle will come and start not on the edge we need it in from the edge around about a quarter of an inch in from the edge or even less if you can when you've positioned this correctly take your presser foot and place it down that will just lock everything into place and help your feed dogs do the work if you've used the default settings for your machine, whether it's a dial or whether it's an electronic machine like this, and you've chosen the stitch, once you start stitching, that will make sure your seam allowance is accurate. Now remember, we want to take pins out. We do not want to sew over pins, you will break a needle. And the first thing we want to do is sew forward a couple of stitches. So it's called a back tack. We go forward three and back three. The key with starting your sewing is to make sure you have enough thread behind. If you don't have enough thread behind and your needle's not in the correct position, what will happen is your, your needle will become unthreaded. So there's a couple of things you can do to avoid this. You can hold onto your threads if you prefer, or you could hand crank this down, this needle down, so hand wheel roll it towards you if you prefer as well. So that's entirely up to you. But you need to press down with your presser foot very gently and sew three stitches forward. One, two, three, and stop. Now we want to do our back tack, so you will either push your lever down and hold it down. In my case, I'm going to hold the back button and I'm going to stitch back three 
If you've come in well away from the edge, you could even back tack right to the edge, but never sew off your fabric. So now we're ready to sew to the other end of our sample. So just make sure when you sew that you're keeping that edge against the guideline and sew forwards. If you come to where a needle is, remove your needle and stop just before the end, so an eighth of an inch maybe closer. Then we want to go backwards three stitches again, and then forwards three stitches. So when we sew a seam, we always back tack at the beginning and end to secure it. Now when you're finished, my machine has an automatic cutter, which is great, but when you're finished, you lift your presser foot up, you make sure your needle is at the highest and then you can pull your fabric away. Now you can either snip the threads or use your thread cutter which most machines tend to have a thread cutter on the side and here is your seam finished. It's a good idea to always snip your threads as you go, there's nothing worse than finishing a sewing project and having to do them all at the end. So now's a really good time to talk about tension. Before you begin any sewing project, you should get some scrap fabric, and if you're sewing two pieces together, most of it, which you generally will be, just take a sample of it, just some spare fabric, and sew two layers together to check your tensions. So what we can see here is our tensions are balanced. So you sew a small seam run, and then you open your fabric up and you pull it like so. So what we're looking for is there is not too much of a gap. You see here there's not much of a gap. You can't see the stitches and that means our tension is balanced. I have more videos on balancing your stitch tension on my YouTube channel if you want to go into it. This is a quick start guide, so I'm not going to go into it great details from here. But if you can see your threads, you do need to change your tension, and your tension will be up here. I'd just like to say at this point, if you have tension issues, it is 99% of the time the upper thread. The best way to check tension is to put two different colours in your machine and see what happens. If you put black on top and yellow underneath and the yellow shows through in the top, it means the top tension is too tight and if the black shows through on the bottom, it means it's too loose. So you can play with that tension dial, but I strongly suggest you never touch the tension dial unless you really need to. And I've got other videos on adjusting tension to help you on that. So just to make that clearer, the looser the tension, the lower the number. If you want tighter the tension, you want a higher number. The main takeaway I'd like you to have from today's lesson is to always sew a sample before every sewing project. It's also a really good idea to plug your iron in when you are sewing your sample because with wovens it's really good to get in the habit of sewing a seam and then pressing a seam and many sewing projects have been ruined because people have ironed their fabric and it's been their good fabric and the iron temperature settings being wrong. So always get in the habit of sewing a sample and ironing it before you begin. So thanks for joining me for today's lesson on straight sewing. For lesson three, we're going to be covering knits and a zigzag. If you like what you see, please hit the subscribe button for more content.